Let's walk back because I do want people to get the value of um, the jab walkies, how you approach them, and just complex con in general. Because so many people ask me, do I think complex con is worth it? And I say, when people ask me, do I think A3C is worth it? Do I think so many events are worth it? And I'll say the primary thing with most of these types of events are the ability to network, the ability mm -hmm. to meet certain people and hopefully leverage that into something. So walk through kind of how that encounter happened and then we can get back to TikTok. Um, anyone who's been to Complex Con understands that there are celebrities and content creators all over the place from King Vader to LL Cool J, Chance the Rapper to Sean Evans. And um, like I said, I use it as a place to network. And there's a lot of areas and opportunities of finesse, finesse at Complex Con. You can kind of sneak back to, you know, backstages and back rooms and uh, sometimes say someone has a VIP bracelet, but they don't want to go to Complex Con the next day. You can take it from them if they didn't put the wristband on too tight. Mm -hmm. And there's just these little cheat codes throughout Complex Con, like, even sparking up a quick little conversation with someone who's working there. And if the relationship goes well, they might be you know, nice enough to let you back somewhere. So because of the nature of this, this event, um, it, would kind of, it just kind of happened upon itself that I saw the Jabba walkies and I just took the opportunity to shoot my shot and to ask them if they would be down to shoot a video. But I'm networking and talking to everyone else, uh, King Vader, the Bentis, these are guys that are huge on TikTok. Kid Key to the Great, he's huge in the dance community. And I'm just talking to them, asking for advice, looking for contact to, you know, uh, collaborate with these people. Hmm. Okay. Got you. So you just approaching them like, yo, I dance too. I appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. Let's talk like that kind of thing. Yeah. Have a quick video ready to just, you know, 15, 30 second video. Sometimes a little quick highlight reel to show different things in a very short amount of time. That's uh, the okay. So they can see that you ain't you aren't a whack dancer. Yeah. Um, and then even just dancing whenever there's music around. Uh people always got their phones on looking for a moment to put on the internet. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what ended up happening. So that the goal was met. <laughs> got, was you. got you. It's interesting. So you basically your promo is one, you already have a snippet to show people if you meet specific people, and then also doing it live in real time for other people to capture and for look for all they know you could be somebody that they just don't know the name of but yeah. if you're good at what you do host oh, oh shit who's this you know yeah what I mean? yeah okay i like that strategy i like that strategy so with the jabberwockies you said you came up you asked for a picture and mm -hmm. then i remember you said they just they walked away right after the picture though yeah <laughs> that was almost it I, and i almost didn't make a tiktok I used to think, oh, it's corny for kids. But my boy was like, just make it. Stop being stubborn. I have an issue where, like, I can be stubborn. And I used to not be too open to ideas outside of what I like to do. Which is why I reached out to you, because yeah. this is the type of stuff you say on your channel all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that, man. A lot of people are like that, but especially creatives. They, yeah. They, they get set in their own ways of different and ways of thinking. It kind of makes you who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But cool, so you got it your own way, and next thing you know, you blew up. Yeah, and the rare thing is I don't, I didn't expect to blow up off of something that wasn't following any trends. That's not a challenge. That wasn't a dance mm. challenge. Although that is the plan to reach out to Kita, let twins, and be like fiction and say, this is what got me viral with the Jabberwockies. I want to do like a handshake dance challenge at this point. You know what I mean? Okay. Handshake dance challenge. What do you mean by that? Uh, so in the video, I walk up to him, we shake hands, and uh, it's the three of us, and we're passing kind of like dance moves back and forth while all holding each other's hands. And uh, I, w I would, in theory, walk up to Let Twins or Fiction and just go for a handshake, and then it turns into a dance. So it's like, oh, every time this guy meets a famous dancer, they, he shakes their hand, and then like a cool video or a cool dance move starts happening. It's, you know, it's crazy. Mm, okay. Got you. I wonder. So you you did this. You had this moment. And I I like the fact that it was creative. It wasn't just like dope dancing. It was that interactive piece, right? Mm -hmm. Because I see this as a challenge. You do have to make this a challenge. 
because automatically you're involving multiple people. Those ones tend to just move even more virally. Yeah. And it's, it's novel at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely something you should leverage. And I think people who are trying to figure out challenges should l- look at it from this angle. Too often, we look at challenges to just be dancers. And yes, it could be a dance because technically y'all are dancing in that. But you don't stop at just, okay, let's dance or let's do this dance or let's make it simple, right? Because why? Why would somebody do that when there's all these dances? Just like there's all this music being promoted, why would they stop to listen to your new song? Yeah. Why would they stop to check out your dancing? If I'm not an active person who's looking for dancers, I just like dancers, why would I stop to do your challenge versus everybody else's challenge that's that's being um, created these days, you know? Yeah. Thank you.